Thank you for coming to my presentation. As was uh, introduced, my name is Adrian and I'm the director of R&D. Brainstorm Cell Therapeutics is a public company traded under the symbol of BCLI, so everything that I will present today is a forward-looking statement. This slide is a snapshot of everything that I would like to present to you today. Brainstorm is focusing on neurodegenerative disorders with a focus today on ALS and MS. Our product, NeuroOn, is mesenchymal stem cells, which are not the normal, regular mesenchymal stem cells that you have heard about, but those cells are undergoing a differentiation, a modification, making them neurotrophic secreting cells. We've completed a phase one, two clinical trial in Hadassah Hospital in Jerusalem under the supervision of uh, Professor Dimitrios Karousis, and I will share with you the results. We are running currently a phase 2A, escalating those trials as well in Hadassah Hospital in Israel. We have an orphan drug designation from both the FDA and EMA, and we're planning a, a clinical trial here in the United States, a full phase 2 double-blind placebo controlled under the FDA. A little bit about our product, Neuron. As you can see, we are talking about adult bone marrow derived stem cells. We are talking about autologous, and we have the technology to expand the number of cells and differentiate them. The process is straightforward. We harvest bone marrow from the hip. We separate the cells, so we have eliminated uh, the non-needed cells. We expand the cells over 20-something days. And just before we implant the cells back to the patient, we are inducing a differentiation. Actually, we are transforming the cells to become neurotrophic secreting cells, and I will show you more data about that. The idea behind the treatment that we are offering is that we would like the cells to be injected in two locations, one in the spinal cord, intrathecally, and one into the muscle, intramuscular, and by that to tackle actually two areas that are relevant to the disease that we are treating, which is ALS. We would like the neurotrophic factors to be secreted into the spinal cord and undergo uptake by the roots, or alternatively inject the cells into the neuromuscular junction and have the effect locally. In summary, the product that we have in uh, Brainstorm is mesenchymal stem cells induced to secrete neurotrophic factors. We are talking about autologous adult stem cells. Of course, as it was said before, there is no risk of this treatment, there is no rejection, there are no safety issues, and the mode of delivery is relatively easy. The growth of the cells that we are using, we are using a proprietary media with a, which is enabling us to grow the cells relatively quicker than the commercial uh, media that is available, let's say fetal calf serum or any other defined media. And actually what you can see under the microscope are, are the cells, the mesenchymal stem cells on the left and mesenchymal stem cells after differentiation on the right. You can see that for BDNF and GDNF, the cells are able to synthesize and to accumulate a high, comp a high quantity of those two factors and later on, and this is real data from the clinical trial that we did, actually secrete those growth factors into the media, and this is actually the treatment that we are giving to the patient. Those are all the patients that we treated, and you can see the bar in blue, just mesenchymal stem cells, and in red or orange, the actual amount of BDNF and GDNF that was secreted in those cases. The justification to the model that we are using and the justification for the cells that, are, that we are using is coming from the preclinical data. In this model, although controversial, but still the one that is most liked by the FDA is the SOD1 model. And you can see that both parameters that are important for ALS patients, the motor capability and the survival, were improved upon the treatment in this model. For those that are not familiar with ALS, here in the United States, it's called Lou Gehrig disease. It's a neurodegenerative disorder. There is no cure, there is no treatment, and actually the patients are relatively dying very fast without the, any ability to stop or halt the progression of the disease. Let me share with you a little bit about our clinical trials. This is a summary of everything that we did. 
We started by treating compassionate patients in Israel. Then we went into a phase one, two safety and tolerability clinical trial, 12 patients. We are currently running a phase 2A escalating dose. We are planning very soon, probably the first quarter of next year, an FDA approved um, clinical trial here in the United States. And we are planning also to have a repeated treatment in Israel. Let me go into more details about each of the clinical trials that we did. The first clinical trial in Hadassah Hospital under the supervision of Professor Karusis was a phase one to clinical trial. It was an open label. We had two groups of patients. As you can see, six patients were early stage and six patients were late stage. The early stage got intramuscular and the later stage, the advanced stages, got the intratecal. The process that we used is that upon recruitment, we follow the patient for two months, we perform bone marrow, as bone marrow aspiration, and then waited another month to grow the cells by altogether accumulating three month follow up of the patient before transplantation. After transplantation, we measured all the parameters for each patient for additional six months. So altogether, nine months each patient in the clinical trial. You can see also that we started with a very low dose of cells, which was approved at the time, and in the later st uh, stage clinical trials, you'll see that we increased the concentration. Out of the first phase one clinical trial, you can see that there were very minimal transient side effects or almost none. And we, I can share with you, although this information was presented, presented in the American uh, Academy, uh, the data that we can share with you is that uh, we saw both in ALS score and in force vital capacity an improvement in the situation of the patients. We have a very significant improvement, although I have to say again, those are only six patients and six patients, and the clinical trial was supposed to be safety only. Upon analyzing the data, we can say and share with you that it's a very encouraging information. The phase two clinical trial that we are running in Israel was to overcome the issue of the minimal concentration that we gave in the first clinical trial. And in this case, again, in Hadassah Hospital, early stage patients, you can see that we have done low, low dose, medium, and high. In this case, it was a combined intramuscular intratecal uh, treatment for 12 patients. The same paradigm was used, recruitment, bone marrow aspiration, transplantation, and six month follow up. This clinical trial is still running. We are now in the six month follow up of the last patients. All the 12 patients were treated. And for the future, this is the clinical trial that we are planning for the United States. We have set collaboration with UMass, Mass General, and Mayo Clinic. We have set up two production facilities, one in Dana Farber Cancer Institute and one in a Mayo Clinic. We have a CRO that is supervising the activity since we are located in Israel and the United States is far away. But what we are trying to accomplish in this clinical trial, it's 48 patients, double blind placebo controlled in the high concentration that was approved in the Israeli clinical trial. Looking forward, we are about to finish the dose escalation in Israel. We are planning to submit a a request for approval for repeat dose in Israel, and in parallel to conduct a clinical trial, the double and blind placebo here in the United States. A little bit of information about our research. In order to address the issue that was brought this morning about commercialization, we have a collaboration with a Canadian company, Octan, where we developed our own proprietary bioreactor that will allow us to grow cells quicker, cheaper, and in a much better way than the open system that you have in a clean room. This collaboration is subsidized by a government, Canadian Israeli fund, and we are hoping that in the first quarter of this year we will have the prototype up and running. Another project that we have in order to improve commercialization is the cryopreservation. Uh, I've published a paper not so long ago about this issue. We are currently capable of freezing our cells for a long period of time, thaw them and re-inject them and show that there is no change between the cells before and after uh, freezing. You can see the markers for the uh, mesenchymal stem cells on the left, before and after, and the ability to differentiate into the three subtypes of cells, 
There is no difference between the cells before and after freezing. This will al allow us to ship the cells, to keep them for a longer period of time. And actually, if we are planning for repeat treatment, each, uh, let's say, a quarter, every three or four months, this will enable us to go for a special <coughs> model, whereas in the first time you have a bone marrow aspiration, you have the cells isolated, expanded, but then you freeze them. For the first time, you go directly to differentiation, but then you don't have to go back to the bone marrow aspiration and the expansion. You can just pick up the cells that are frozen and go for the next step. In summary, the neuron product that Brainstorm has uh, has demonstrated both safety and tolerability. We know that the secretion of the growth factors that we presented here, but there are some additional ones that we are going to publish the paper very soon, are very important to the halting of the progression of ALS. We are about to finish the phase uh, 2A clinical trial, and Professor Dimitrios Karousis will summarize the results and publish a paper about it. We have met the FDA, <coughs> excuse me, for the clinical trial that is planned here in the United States, and we have a green light, but we still have to provide them with additional information. I think we have an attractive business model by using both the bioreactor and the freezing capability, and we think that our product can be used for other indications as one of our um, um, scientists, Professor Danny Offen, has published several articles about that, he was able to treat different uh, diseases with those cells, and we believe that although our main target is ALS, MS is the next one, but additional ones will come later. Thank you.